Hey, welcome to Say Nado. Let's go up to the barn garage and see what Victor's into today. What do you mean you don't want to tear the whole dash apart just to take a heater core out? Well, I don't blame you. I don't want to either. So that's why I'm going to show you how I back flush a heater core. Now, no matter what kind of car it is, Corvettes, more Corvettes, Mustang, the first thing you're going to need to determine is the flow of the fluid. And it comes out the top of the engine here on this Mustang and goes towards the heater core. And we don't have to go all the way to the firewall to take it loose because it has handy connections right here. And you can disconnect both of these. One of them goes into a bucket. The other one you need to connect your hose to. And the one you want to connect the hose to is the one that normally comes out of the heater core. On this Crown Vic, the hose is up, up here near the top of the firewall. Could be on the passenger's driver's side. Doesn't matter. They're usually up near the top where you can get to them. There are exceptions to that rule, like this Toyota Camry, which is normally very easy to work on no matter what you're doing, except down there is the heater core hoses. Not that easy to get to. Of course, an alternative to at least one of the hoses is to come up here near the thermostat housing and take it loose here. Apparently, I'm brain damaged or there's something else wrong with me because I've chosen to do this on a Prius. But you have to take all this stuff loose, wiper motor and everything's got to come out just to get access to the hoses. Which, yes, they're near the top of the firewall there, which normally would be easy to get hold of, except for all this cowl and everything. Now, all that mess does fill up the table, but it's a lot easier with the little Ryobi One Plus, which I put a link in the description to all the tools and parts that I use on every video I make. Now, I know these kind of pliers are normally used for fencing or electrical work, but a good heavy pair of pliers like this works really well for these pinch clamps to pinch them and work them off of where they're up there. And if you don't have any of those, some channel locks work really well as well. And then the channel locks have a second function here. You can open them up pretty good. Get down in here and grab your hose. And don't smash the end of the pipe under there. You wanna to try to get that hose to rotate just a little bit before trying to pull on it. And that way, as you rotate back and forth a little bit, it just comes right on off of there fairly easily. And then just repeat with the second one. And I like to stick my hoses pointing up, because when I put the hoses pointing up, they're not pouring antifreeze all over the ground. You don't want a bunch of antifreeze all over the ground. Or, and, and when you put the stuff in a bucket, don't just leave the bucket unattended because you don't want animals to come up and drink out of that bucket. Now, I know they, they say this antifreeze is so much, newer antifreeze is so much safer for animals and all that kind of stuff. They make big commercials about it and they make a big deal in their commercials about how safe it is and everything. But do you really want your pet drinking that stuff? Do you really trust those people? It's safer, not safe. There's a difference. Now I have an insane, elaborate hose deal going on here. You can buy a cheap adapter kit for flushing heater cores out at the parts store, or I can put a link in the description of the video where you can just order one. I used a heat gun so that I can cram this up on top of the water hose. But I'm not recommending you do anything that I do in these videos because you could end up bruised and bleeding just like me. And we wouldn't want that, would we? Now, I put this hose where the water hose is forcing it in on the bottom because that is normally the outlet. And the hose that's going into the bucket is on the top because that's normally the inlet. And what I want to happen here is any trash that's being forced into that heater core that comes from rust or anything else from the engine and gets embedded into the little passageways in that heater core I don't want to force it in there tighter. I want to back flush and force it to come backwards out of there through this hose. So that's why I'm hooking up my hoses backwards from what the normal flow in the car is.
you see the trash in the bottom of the bucket, it comes out right away. Because like I said, it's lodged right up against the, the little passageways, trying to get into those passageways and stopping them up. So it doesn't really take much to get that stuff to go ahead and start coming out. Let's see, get this over here for sunlight. I hope you can see that trash down there. I hope you can see the trash in the bottom of that bucket because that's one of the benefits of using a bucket like that is that you get to see just how much came out of the heater core, if anything, and that gives you kind of an idea of what whether it's going to work or not, whether you're going to get some benefit from it. Hopefully you do. Hopefully that unstops your heater core and you don't have to replace the thing. Especially if it's one that you have to take all the dash out to get to it. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please put them in the comments below. As a matter of fact, if you've got a comment about anything, please put it in the comments below. Those really help out the channel. Thank you for watching. And if you're still watching this to this point, you are awesome. Hey, if you like this video, we've got a whole lot more. We've got tool reviews, we've got repair videos, we've got show car videos, hot rods, mod rods, you name it. If it's got wheels on it and an engine, it's probably on this channel. So subscribe, like, and binge watch Zane Auto. Binge watch Zane Auto.